Welcome guys to, I guess, episode 0 of the uh, train tutorial. So yeah, this is only relevant if you are already playing the 017 experimental versions. So just in case you didn't know, a couple days ago now, or actually almost yeah, a couple days ago, uh, the first experimental version of 017, so the next big Factorio version released. And that comes actually with quite a few changes and also some changes that are related to trains. Um, so I just wanted to give a quick little update here, just a little fix up for 017. Um, in a few months, hopefully before like the stable releases of 017 come out, I will have uh, already a new updated tutorial also over trains because I'm also doing the complete train tutorial, uh, the complete Vector tutorial um, series, exactly. And yeah, I'm still working on that one and that will also have a part about trains soon, which is essentially all the five episodes or now six episodes of the train tutorial, but condensed into like one video. So if that's out, you will find that linked here everywhere. If you wonder what else has changed in 017, then I also made a quick little overview video, which isn't that quick and it's not that little and also contains some instructions on how to update to 017. Yeah, but let's not waste any more time and let's dig a little bit into a couple changes. So mostly, or the biggest thing in 017, as you probably have already noticed, is the new uh, fresh look for the GUI. And that also extends to the train GUI, which is the main reason that I want to do this little update here. Um, also, I think this is also a new thing. When a train runs out of fuel, you also get like an alert down here. Um, yeah, but that's not too important. That right here is important, guys. That's the new uh, the new train GUI. So if we just click on a locomotive, we will see uh, that's so the fuel as usual and then our schedule. So you will see that in the next or in the first episode already of the train tutorial that the train GUI is usually uh, made up out of uh, two sections or at least it was in the old version exactly so we had our stations up here and the conditions down there but now that's all actually in the same thing um so we can go ahead and add a new station here and now you will already uh, see the blue ones are actually available because the, uh, this already is like uh, my uh, my test map you can see there are quite a few uh, train stations and quite a few train networks that aren't connected with each other. Um, so if I go back onto our little train here, exactly here you can uh, see how many stations there are with the same name. So we can see like train yard has like 42 stations, for example. Um, but if you have a over it, uh, there's already like all 42 stations are not accessible from current position. And from like iron mine base, copper and copper mine one, um, only half of them are accessible, but you can see they are blue, so that means there are at least some of the stations accessible currently. So that's quite nice. If you're building a train network and your other station is red, then you messed something up and they can't uh, find a path. Alright. Um, yeah, base copper, we're already standing in that one, so let's just take that. Um, and now, as you can see, we can add our weight condition here. So now this is, yeah, well, all in the same list, as I said. Mm. Yeah, so there are some actually also some new things in here. Passenger present and passenger not present. These are also uh, new conditions. Um, so yeah, these conditions are essentially, uh, yeah, well, when these are true, then the train can pass on or can, like, drive to the next station. So we can now build something like a passenger train, for example, which is then, uh, say, departing only when a passenger is present. Mm, but for this one, we will go empty cargo. So this should wait until, like, the cargo has been emptied. Let's also take, like, a time past. We can, like, have a fancy new slider here. But let's just keep that. Let's do maybe, like, 10 seconds here. And now we have this OR thing, and we can click that and make, like, an end out of this. Um, yeah, so now it's basically if either one of those is true, then a train will leave. With and, both of these have to be true. So now uh, the train has to be empty cargo, so it has to be completely empty. And 10 seconds need to be have uh, passed already. 
we will uh, take that out. Uh, let's say the passenger is not present. Uh, so that way the train won't leave once someone is in there. And now we can also like and uh, things here. We can and like all three together. We can do like only one. Um, yeah, so all the ones that are in like an and block together are also like highlighted here with this white little thing. So now what that essentially means is these two have to be uh, true together or this one right here is true. So yeah, you can get uh, pretty complex here. So let's just uh, take that out to make this a little bit easier again. And we can just go ahead and add the other stations. So uh, yeah, this would be copper mine one then. In that case, uh, full cargo inventory, for example, and also like uh, 10 seconds time passed. Then we go, can go into automatic mode here. So now the train is going and we can see like this uh, neat little white line, which tells us uh, which path the train is going to take to the next station, which is incredibly helpful if you want to like debug something. Um, yeah, and there you could already see uh, the new visual representation of those conditions, which is essentially uh, showing us how long the train basically still has to wait. So here we can see the 10 seconds are passing um, and like the empty cargo motor. So it's almost empty now, so that might be the one it hits first, okay. Um, yeah. Do we have some other functional trains somewhere? I think this one should work. Yeah, now we can also just go and zoom around here like in a normal map view, and then we can click on another train to also quickly control the other one. Uh, let's just go back here for a second, actually. Let's take the other train, put it into manual mode. We can also Oh yeah, like that opens this thing in like the full map view. Yeah, here we can click to center our, ourselves back or we can also turn off like station names or whatever. Um, yeah, all right. We can also uh, color the train up here, which is then opening like uh, the like real view basically. So yeah, we can just uh, color the trains like that. And then it shows the color in there. So a bit of weird because that's like uh, looking like a color picker where you could usually like click on something else and get that color, but that's not the case here. Just so you know. All right, and then we are basically uh, almost done here. Uh, oh yeah, here, uh, here we have like a bit of a bigger train network which we could take a quick look on. Oh yeah, here we have some more train stations, for example. Um, so here's uh, also like the disable station, which then looks like that. We also have like, yeah, our buttons here, so we can tell the train where to go next. And we can always see a nice route that the train is then going to take. Um, so now it's kind of the last thing I want to highlight here. If you hit control, this brings up like this little thingy. And there we can now set a temporary station. So now let's say you go there, just click on it and then uh, we see our temporary station automatically has like its five second wait, wait condition in there. So that gives you enough time to like get out or whatever. Um, super nice again also for debugging something because here you can See, like, yeah, here we can go because, like, it's able to find a path, but down there in the system, which isn't connected, uh, we can see, like, the little circle there, but that thing is not giving us any path. Um, so, yeah, overall, pretty helpful, I would say. Lots of new, nice features I'm quite happy about, and also probably some things that are very useful for beginners. Um, one last little thing I want to mention. Uh, which isn't really necessary for a beginner, certainly, but it's still nice to know. I mean, oh yeah, you can also click on that and then this also brings up the train over here. Um, 
Yeah, but if a train has no conditions, no wait conditions at a station. So for example, if we just take a station, uh, we put that right there and we go in here and we add that station. Also really nice that you can now, despite like all these stations here, you can always see which stations are directly accessible. Uh, so we could add this station in. So we can say you go to base copper, then you go to this station and then to the copper mine. And because I have, let's just go quickly to the other one here. Um, yeah, and because I said that this one has no wait conditions, the train will uh, basically just, let's also say it should go here. It will now just go right through there and will not come to a stop, which it would do in 016 as far as I know. Uh, yeah, which is nice if you want to build like waypoints for your trains. Mm, yeah, just wanted to throw that in here as well. Uh, also, I guess you can now create a blueprint and also say I want to have trains in there. So you can now create blueprints with trains in them, which is also super nice. And you can also like deconstruct trains the same way. Um, yeah, other than that, I would say this is pretty much done. So now with all of that, you should be able to follow on with the other train tutorials. Or maybe you just watch that to know what all is new in trains in 017. So yeah, if you still have questions, if you stumble upon something that doesn't make sense to you, then just always ask in the comments down below. And yeah, well, have fun with 017 and trains, I guess. And a new really nice train GUI. So let's see you all in the next video. Until then, have a great time. See you all then. Bye bye.